It's just x squared is greater than 9. Let me tell you what not to do. It looks like x squared is greater than 9. Why don't we just take the square root to both sides and put a plus or minus and then get rid of this and say x is greater than or equal to plus or minus 3. Well, firstly, if you really read this notation, it doesn't really make that much sense. Because right here we are saying x is greater than past these three, and then, oh, so equal to, wait, 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 there's no equal sign, I'm sorry, greater. All right, we are saying x is greater than past these three, and another one is x is greater than negative three. No, don't do that. The reason is because here we are dealing with a non-linear inequality. This is x squared. So be really, really careful. So how exactly can we do it though? I'm going to show you guys the safe way to do this for this one. First, make one side equal to zero. So move this to here. Still greater than zero. Now, factor the left hand side. This is the difference of two square situation. So we get x plus 3, x minus 3 is greater than 0. From here, I'm going to find out the numbers that we care. Meaning, how can we make this equal to 0? Well, x plus 3 equal to 0, subtract 3 to both sides, x is equal to negative 3. So we care about negative 3. From here, we care about positive 3. Now, I'm going to do a number line test. So draw a number line, make a mark. Negative 3 is smaller, so put it here, and then make a mark here. 3 is bigger, so put it here. Go back to the original denominator. Go back to the original inequality. It's just a greater than, right? So that means we are not including this. We are also not including that. Now, we are going to take a point, take a number that's less than negative 3, which is on this interval, so let's say if we use negative 4, let's say here, we use negative 4. What we are going to do is we are going to put negative 4 into here and here to see if we end up with a true statement or not. So have a look. Negative 4 plus 3 times negative 4 minus 3. Do we get greater than 0? Let me tell you. The truth is, you don't even have to compute it precisely. Just work it out if it's positive or negative. Have a look. This is negative. This is also negative. Negative times negative is of course positive. If it's positive, it's greater than zero. If it's true, then we are going to take that region, right? take that interval. Now let's do another one right here. Pick a number from negative 3 to 3. Let's pick 0. Don't pick that negative 2.5. Pick an easy one, right? Pick 0. Put it here, put it here. And you can even do this in your head because if you put 3 in here, again, you just have to work out if it's positive result or negative result from these parentheses. This is going to give us positive results. And then when you put 3 in here, that will give us negative result. Positive times negative is negative. We don't want that. Now, pick a number bigger than 3. Let's say 4. Put it here, positive, put it here, positive. Of course it's positive, so we are going to take this region. So this is the safe way to do it. I recommend you guys to do it like this. And finally, we just have to write the answer. And I told you I'm going to write the interval notation. But let me just tell you that this part, it's actually x less than negative 3. And this part is saying that or x can be greater than 3. So as you can see, earlier, if you just take the square roots to both sides, you will still end up with x is greater than negative 3. This right here doesn't make too much sense because x is greater than 3 and x is also greater than negative 3. But here, you can see that either we have x is less than negative 3 or x is greater than positive 3. This we go from negative infinity up to negative 3, not including it. Union, meaning the other piece, we start it as 3, not including that all, going to infinity. So that's the interval notation way to answer the inequality.